This episode of Film Ride is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Ride, we vomit rainbows and shoot peeps. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes some mystery out of the effects and techniques going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. Now, before we get into today's episode, a little house cleaning from last week. I forgot to give you guys a link on how to get rid of the tracking markers, which was on Josh's hand during the effects thing, which is kind of a big deal. There's a really great webinar from Mocha on how you could do this, which shows exactly how we did it. So go here and get your learn on. And I'm sorry I forgot. We were in a rush and I was late and it, not perfect. But now I am once again going back to some other VFX that we did, but never taught. But because I love you, and when you bat those adorable eyes at me, I just can't say no. It's a sickness. Rye, I love your laser gun ep and was hoping that you were going to show the rainbow vomit, but you never did. Sad face. And what about the effect of Eris when he gets shot? Could you show those? Sad face. Hey, let's turn that frown upside down, you know? Think good thoughts, buddy. Rub your belly for me, because Uncle Rye Rye loves you a little too much. Perverted. You know. Okay, bumper. What's up with you? What'd you get? So first up is the Vomit of Rainbow Proportions, which I shot this from the side to make things a little bit easier from the front. They would have added a few extra issues and we wouldn't have seen the full glory of the single rainbow all the way across the room. But now we drop that dirty monkey into After Effects and create a new comp, which we will call Vomit Stable. Next, we find some trackable points on our footage that we can stabilize. I did rotation and position only. Then track and apply. Now create a null, call it scene track or something like that, and then we will just do a general track of our scene, then apply that to that knoll for later use. Next, we're gonna go to our composition size and make the size a bit bigger, big enough so that the footage does not go outside of the composition, since after doing that stabilization, it's wiggling around a bit, which this will make sense in a minute. Now, make yet another knoll and use that to track the point of Eris's mouth, which we just did this by hand. We just went frame by frame because it was quicker and easier in this scenario. And now at this point, you should have your footage stabilized, a knoll that is just the scene tracked, and a knoll for his mouth. Got it? Good. So now we get into the color fun stuffs. So make a new layer and call it red. This will be the red spectrum of our glorious rainbow all the way across the sky. Then apply particular to this layer and click position XY and parent it to the mouth no layer. And now we will find the point that we want the vomit to start coming out. Set a keyframe for the particles per second to be at 1000 here. Then go back two frames and set it to zero. That way there is no delay once the particleness is vomiting from his vomiter. Now inside particular, then emitter, set emitter type to point and the direction to direction null with a spread of three since we wanted a straight line. We made the X rotation 90, so it would be perpendicular to the camera lens and then the Y rotation 65, so it was on a slightly, slightly upward slant thingy. Moving down, we set velocity to 4,000, then down in physics, we set gravity to 3,180. This gave us that balance of the perfect arc with the speed we wanted too. And since we want a streaky light look, we will set particle type to glow sphere with a feather of 100. Now we're using such a high velocity and glow sphere here because we wanted to be able to see that something was actually moving from his mouth and not just be a solid object. Using the sphere allows the motion blur to create streaks and give visible motion needed to sell this and keep it from again looking solid. Now we go to the last frame that we want airs to be thrown up color and we keyframe it inversely to what we did at the start. This time a uh, thousand, then two frames to zero, which we will set that 1000 keyframe at the last frame that we want light coming from his mouth. And then of course, add motion blur to this layer. Now we have made it past the hard part. It's all downhill from here, kids. Gee, I, I feel awful. Funny. Set our red layer into add mode, then duplicate the red layer for every spectrum of the rainbow. You know what I'm saying? Like Roy G. Biv, that B. 
like Mrs. McLeary taught you. You know, the one that was with the slight accent. She was old and a little mean, but for some reason you still thought she was hot. Come on, you know what, you know what I'm talking about. Perverted. Now for all these duplicated layers, other than changing the color, all we will have to do is change the rotation of each of these on the Y axis and change each on their random seed values so that they're not all exactly looking the same and uniform and similar and whatnot. Moving along, we're gonna copy that scene track null that we created in the beginning, make a new comp, then drag our previous comp into this new comp, and then you see that it's all shaking around and crazy. That's because it's stabilized, but now we're gonna unstabilize it like it was me and not Josh. You get it? Because I'm, I'm stable and, and Josh is not, he's not. Nice joke, bro. To unstabilize it and make it look correct, we're gonna paste our tracking null to the timeline here, making sure that we are pasting it at the correct frame that the tracking started in the other composition. Then we're gonna pick whip our layer here with Eris vomiting to the null layer, and we now have correct motion back into our rainbow vomiting vomitingness. Bam. Bam me where? Of course, we also added a lens flare, which you could do or not do. That's up to you. It's not a must for the effect, but I'm feeling a little winded here now. So I'm gonna go sip some Gatorade and then when we come back, we need some shock and Eris effect thingy. Yeah. Do you need a domain name for a domain that you need for hosting and web stuff? Then you should be getting a .NET from Domain.com. It's perfect. A .NET universally is known and will inject your website instantly with credibility like a syringe to your arm with credibility. You will immediately discover the advantages of building your web presence around a .NET. If you already got a .com, why not get that .NET? Get that corresponding .NET, man. You know, protect your brand and what have you. If the .com's taken, you take that .NET and you say, you know, he should have taken those words of wisdom. You can find a .NET at domain.com. They're affordable. They're only $8.99 a year for the .NET. And you can get it even cheaper by using the coupon code FILMRIDE at checkout. You get 15% off the already super affordable service. So don't forget to use that coupon code FILMRIDE. It helps us keep this show free for you. And you get yourself some sweet domain hosting action on the cheap. That's good stuff. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Logo. Yeah, it's been a productive episode so far, hasn't it? Yeah! What's going on in here today? We already knocked out the rainbow vomit, and now, onto the shocking Erisness. <laughs> so in After Effects, we're gonna take our footage and duplicate it, then grab the roto brush by clicking here, then double-clicking the clip we are adding it to, and this will take you to the Layer tab, which is where we're going to grab our brush and paint in the areas that we want to mask, hold alt, and paint out the areas that aren't our subject. And we will go frame by frame, tweaking this for about 11 frames, starting right where he gets hit until 11 frames later. Now, we go back into our comp, and if we shy the layer below, you'll see that we now have a masked out Eris. This isn't perfect, but all, it's all we need for what we're doing. Then just trim up this clip to be those 11 frames. Now we're gonna add fractal noise to this layer, set type to basic, uh, noise to block, contrast to 132, brightness to three, and then keyframe your evolution settings to move a lot over the course of these 11 frames. I did about 64 cycles, which gives you that nice motion. Now we set the layer to soft light and we have this, but that's not what we want. We want it to shoot over his body sort of thingy. So we create a small circular mask over his stomach like so, set a keyframe for the mask path, move forward about five frames and open it all the way around him. Now we're gonna duplicate this mask, set this duplicated version to subtract and move the keyframes so that the first keyframe of this mask starts with the last keyframe of the last one. Then move back one frame and then take the mask completely off screen and we have this. One chasing the other, revealing, then taking away the layer. Finally, I added an adjustment layer with ripple and keyframed it to ripple the image a bit right at impact. And then above that, a firecracker asset from Action Essentials, which I shifted the hue on and set it to add. And we now have... <laughs> It really is surprising how simple that effect is, but there you have it. You now know all the VFX that we did from that short, and since you do, I thought it'd be fun to do another no VFX video. So I'm uploading this sketch with no VFX or any color grading for you guys to download and practice if you would like to our Film Ride Extras YouTube page. So jump over here, download the video, and go crazy. And if you do, shoot me a tweet. I'd love to see you guys' take on these effects. But that is, in fact, it for today. I'll see you guys next week when... Hermione steals my stuff.